Ciao friends, welcome to Simple Italian Cooking. This is Liz and I'm so glad you're here because I'm doing one of my favorite recipes. Actually, I tend to say that a lot. A lot of these are my favorite recipes. But anyway, we are making Italian chicken cutlets and I'm really excited because um, it's so easy to do yet people think that it must be some secret process to make it, you know, Italian and cutlets and so special and this and that. But I really have to tell you, it's so it's so easy. And uh, this particular method was kind of loosely taught to me by my Sicilian mother-in-law. Um, and so I really couldn't tell you if I've changed it over the years. So I'm showing you how it is. But the original base was from my mother-in-law. So I'm just going to do um, one chicken breast for now. And that's because it's a very large one. And they do take a little bit of time to do. So the first thing we're going to do before you even cut the chicken breast is you have to know the proper method for dipping them. So the first method, and I need to change something here real quick. Um, I'm missing one of my windows here. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do, the process is when you dip the, um, the, the chicken, you dip it in flour first. Why flour? Is it because of flavor? Is it because of texture? Well, what the flour does is it sticks to the wet, moist chicken. Even if you pat it dry, it's still going to be moist. So what that does, it provides a coating on the chicken which then when you dip it into the egg, the egg will stick to it, okay? If you don't do that, it's more likely that the egg will just kind of drip off. And then we're gonna dip it into the breadcrumb mixture. So I'm just using regular white flour. Um, going to just use a single egg. I don't think I'll need more. Um, that was not a good crack. That was not a good crack at all, because I can see some of the shell in there. Come on, I think I got it. All right, and uh, and then with the with the actual breadcrumb mixture, very very simple. There are lots of different ways you can do this, uh, and I'm not going to say there's a wrong or right way. It's just it should be simple. And so oh, I didn't get it. Okay, hang on, I gotta find it. So you can use for the breadcrumbs, you can use Italian seasoning. I can't get it. I'm going to get another egg. <laughs> I don't have time on a live to fish for a, for a shell. That, and you know how hard it is to get those things. So let me just use a regular bowl here. No, let me see what I have. Um, yeah, I'm going to use a regular bowl. So with the breadcrumb mixture, I like to do breadcrumbs and parsley. That's it. Um, just very simple. Perfect. I'd still be fishing for that little piece in there. Uh, so anyway, you can use store-bought Italian seasoning if you want. Uh, if you don't even want to add parsley, you don't have to. I'm using dry. You could use, if you wanted to give it, you know, even a little bit different flavor, you can even add some basil in there or something. Um, I'm not necessarily a fan of that, but uh, some people may really, really enjoy it. So I'm gonna get moving on this recipe here. And, uh, all right, so we have that. We got the egg mixture that's beaten. We got the flour that we're gonna dip it in. Oh, and with the flour, what you're gonna do is just add a pinch of salt and a little bit of cracked pepper. So that's where we get a little bit of the flavor from. Okay. And then just give it a stir. Okay. All right. So we have that, we got the egg, we got the breadcrumbs. Now this is really funny. Well, not funny, but I did not have any breadcrumbs, okay, before I got this together. So I was like, oh man, what am I gonna do? So one of the hacks that I do when cooking, I just never 
I never plan ahead enough to know to get breadcrumbs. And I like to use organic because um, I just do. And so it's very hard to find organic breadcrumbs. If anybody knows where to get them, well, let me know. And so what I do is I take our organic bread. Now, I had some that was toasted up. It was an Italian loaf, a baguette. And I just cut it up into small, you know, cubes. And I put it in our Nutribullet, which is like a blender, and created my own breadcrumbs. And it works out great. Voila. So I think it's going to have extra, extra flavor because that bread was toasted. And uh, it was already toasted. So I can smell the toasted. I mean, it tastes like toasted artesian bread, baked artesian bread. It's like, it smells delicious. If it smells delicious, it's probably going to taste delicious. So we got that out of the way. Let me move this because I don't want to splatter anything on it. And you can use uh, dried parsley. You can use fresh parsley. Uh, I'm using the dried. I just find it a little easier. So, okay, so I'm going to use these uh, cooking gloves, food gloves, which are really great for having on hand because um, you don't have to keep washing your hands over and over and over again, especially on a recipe like this. So we want to um, slice. Okay, so this is how uh, when making Italian cutlets, this is how you want to do it. You want to slice it so they're about a quarter of an inch thick. Okay, so I'm going to cut off some of this extra fat here. really don't want that. And we're just going to slice it. Okay. Just like that. And you don't have to be precise. You don't have to be uh, a magician to do that. But in my opinion, you can see that thinner is, is a little better because we're going to uh, well, you don't have to. You can pound it a little bit. Um, it does help tenderize the meat. That's why people do it. I actually don't have a meat tenderizer. I really need to get one. You know, I mean, I just use a um, a, a uh, rolling pin. So the best time to cut these is when the chicken is partially frozen, which it was this morning. Uh, but now it's like completely thawed, so it's a little, little loosey goosey here. Yeah, that's good. Can I get another one of that? Yeah, I might be able to. So I personally think it's better to have them a little too thin than too thick. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna cut it in half this way. And so that gives us a few right there. Um. Should I do another one? I think I will. Let me just cut these up real quick. I have another one here um, that is, you know, I don't, like, th that would be enough for me. But I definitely want to make enough for my husband because I am doing this for lunch. And I was going to do this after the video because I didn't want to take too much time. But, you know what? If you are watching this and it's not live, you can fast forward and get through this part and get on to the other good stuff. Speaking of, please, if you like easy Italian recipes, that is like what I am all about. Uh, you need to subscribe and you need to follow. So whether you're, if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and hit that follow, like, share it with some friends. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, get all the notifications. Okay. Oh, that's so good. I can like see it now. Okay. So see how easy this is with the gloves. Voila. Okay. So now what we're going to do um, is I do want to bang it just a little bit. And I'm not going to bang it in the open. You want to put some plastic wrap or something on it. So let me just get that real quick for you. Um, and Let's see here. I think I will just grab a Ziploc bag. I'm going to put on some gloves again. These are really nice. I really do recommend them. Um, they're not latex. I don't know what they are. 
It's plastic, but they're food grade. So, okay, cool. So I'm just going to do a few at a time. So when you pound them, it does help tenderize them. And what does that mean? That is just a fancy way of saying it's not going to be tough. That's all. You really don't want it. So I'm like going to make these like into cutlet cutlets um, to where they are thin. So I'll try and put as many in here. Not too many because they will spread. So I'm going to show this to you. Okay. And I wish I could put it on Zoom, but. And all you're going to do is tap it like this. Okay. And just kind of break up some of those fibers, those tough tendons in there. You don't necessarily need to get it like see-through, but that's that's nice. These are going to taste delicious. So the only problem with doing cutlets sometimes is that it can be kind of messy when you start frying them. But I'm going to show you some tips. And uh, I think you're going to be really happy with that. So again, just kind of hit it. If you do it too hard, you get a little too anxious taking out some of that aggression. Don't worry about it if it separates. Um, and, uh, you know, tears or something like that. It's like, so what? I mean, really, it does not need to be perfect. And that's what's so great about, like, so much of Italian cooking. So many of these recipes are just like, yeah, don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that is really good. We have got the first part done. And I've got a plate here, which is what you're going to want to. Just set it aside here. And the first thing we're going to do is dip it in. Get that out of the way. Dip it in the flour like this. Get it coated. Okay. Then we're going to dip it in the egg. I probably am going to need another one since I'm doing two chicken breasts. Okay. Just like that. And I'm going to use try and use my left hand here to change the view so that you can actually see what I'm doing here. So we have this. So I'm going to let it drip. I don't want to waste the egg. Use more than I need. Try and squeeze all this in here. And this is where it can get a little messy. So I just try and, again, using the gloves, really nice. Makes clean up operas. So we're just going to do that. We're going to do it with each of these here, just one by one, and then dip it in the egg. Again, get the excess off, but the egg is still on there. There we go. Perfect. And put it in the breadcrumbs. Okay, hopefully I have enough. If not, that's okay. I'll just cook them up later. Not a big deal. And again. In here, in here. I mean, seriously, who cannot do this? Super easy. Let me change the camera view back so that. There we go. All right. So I would love to know how you guys, how all my friends out there, especially those who grew up in an Italian home, learning how to cook. How do you make your chicken cutlets? Simple like this, or do you really add a lot of other ingredients to it? Um, this was a recipe, like I said, that I learned from my Sicilian mother-in-law. Um, when I married her son, I did not know how to cook barely anything. 
Um, and uh, I knew how to cook a few things. But this was one of those recipes that I was like always impressed when she would make them. So when we would go up to uh, Ohio when we were first married and we would visit, she just loved to cook. How many of you have uh, grandmothers and mothers that it's just a pleasure. It's just a pleasure to cook. And we'd come up there and we'd be so tired from our drive, eight, nine hour drive or wherever we were. Didn't matter what time it was. Didn't matter if we got there in the morning. Well, not the morning. Didn't matter if we got there in the afternoon. Didn't matter if we got there at dinner time. Didn't matter if we got there late at night. Nina would be happy, more than happy. Whip out a few things, a few ingredients, and she'd make us some of the best meals the best and they were so simple and that is really uh one of the joys of having you know this knowledge of recipes i gotta get another egg here while i chat with you um but that is one of the joys of italian cooking is that it's not complicated it really actually is very easy And, um, and it doesn't take, you don't have to spend hours and hours in the kitchen just to make something that tastes good. I mean, it's just, it's a delight to cook when it's easy, when it's, you don't have to, it's not like exact measurements. You can see I haven't measured a thing here. I'm just going to go ahead and bread up these other ones. So, well, it's kind of funny. My husband told me, he, I mentioned to him a while ago, I was like, I really want to do chicken cutlets. And he's like, Liz, it's going to take too long. It's going to get boring. You know, it takes a while. So I was like, ham hawing, because I really wanted to do a live on this. So my friend, Sherry, she's a chef, and she has a website, um, i trying to remember it offhand, it's uh, From Michigan to the Table, and she also has a YouTube channel, she's Chef Sherry Roney, okay, I'll put a link, um, and so I happen to be watching one of her videos, because she does live, she specializes in uh, Blackstone griddles, so if you like to do a lot of outdoor griddling and stuff like that she is uh the queen of that and you need to really check her out it's a, oh my gosh the stuff that she makes but i don't want to get too far off track here so i was watching one of her videos and guess what she was doing she was doing cutlets so i said okay sweetie look she's doing it and she's doing it on a griddle there is no reason why i can't do it either so he was like okay but she only did like she did a smaller quantity so her video didn't take as long but okay so I am I have run out of breadcrumbs which is okay because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put all this in here and I'm just gonna do these as a non breaded style um, and I'll cook it up um, when we're done uh, later all right so good so that's done Get that out of the way. And again, so I'm done with this, done with the cutting board. We don't need that anymore. And we got a pile of chicken breasts that are ready to. Now, if I had a bigger kitchen, I'd be like doing, I'd be frying them up and breading, but say la vie, right? Even though that's French. All right, so I'm using a induction burner, my N induction burner. And you all know I talk about them all the time because I use them all the time. And I'm going to fry it using my <clears throat> Cuisinart 5.5 quart. 
it will fit on here. It's a little wider than here, but it'll still work. And uh, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm going to turn it up high just to get it heated up quick. And uh, hopefully the sound, you, they're okay with that. So I'm just using a smooth style um, extra virgin olive oil. So I don't know if you've noticed that a lot of brands now, like this one is Pompeii, and this is not a paid ad or anything. Um, we bought a bunch of theirs, and we didn't realize that some of them were marked smooth, and some were marked something else. I don't remember now what it said. But anyway, so the smooth type, if you see this with different brands, it's because this is for like sauteing and stir frying and stuff like that. Okay. So the induction burner heats up very fast. I should mention that. So that's what I'm going to use this for because I really don't want to use the, uh, I don't want to use the uh, real better olive oil that I use for salads and with a lot of my other stuff for this because we're, we're just frying. And um, so I have it set to a medium medium high and I can definitely tell that that is <clears throat> nice and hot and I'm gonna go ahead and again do another zoom in let me see if I can move this over so a little more centered yeah so you can see that and I can tell that it's hot to be a little bit hotter Okay. Yeah. And I can hear it immediately sizzling. So these are going to cook pretty fast because they um, are thin. And what you do is you just lay them in the pan. And you get as many in there as you can. <laughs> so my pan is a little warped. Just a tad. And we're going to go ahead and you can really hear it sizzling, which is what you want to hear. So do not be shy with the olive oil. That is uh, one of the little secrets. And uh, I know we all want to conserve and this and that, but, you know, you really have to. Um, oh, these are all big that are left, so I think I will be okay. Because what you don't just want to, like burn it, cook it, you want to really actually fry it in the cutlet. So it's going to take about two minutes on each side. So if you're wondering what to serve with it, I'm actually going to heat up some water. I should have had that going already. And that was um, that I'm going to have some pasta on the side with the chicken cutlets, which will be really good. Um, I like to take the chicken cutlets with the pasta with some marinara sauce or any other type of sauce and well a bread sauce and then I just kind of like to mix it together I like to serve it um, alongside I don't serve it together but I like to do it alongside and then I, I just I love the flavors of the chicken cutlets with the fresh pasta sauce and oh yum and the other thing is um, leftovers oh my gosh have them in a sandwich get some nice italian bread it's so good it's just so delicious i mean it's great for picnics too um instead of worrying about like all the bones if you like gonna take a typical picnic and you're gonna chicken thighs and chicken legs and drumsticks and all that kind of stuff this is so delicious smelling. I love it. I can guarantee you that if there is any Italians out there that are watching this or will watch this, I don't even have to say I wish you could smell this because I know that in your mind you you can taste it. You can taste it because this is this is how your mom used to make it. This is how your grandma used to make it. So these are getting nice. I gotta do it a little bit higher. I'm gonna flip them over. 
So if you're wondering what you can make alongside with this, if you're serving it besides pasta, really any type of salads. And I have a bunch of uh, Italian salads on my website, simpleitaliancooking.com. Make sure to subscribe because I got a newsletter that goes out multiple times a week with easy Italian recipes for you. Um, everything from lots of different type of pasta dishes, chicken dishes, um, <clears throat> salads, side dishes, desserts. You can really smell it now, baby. Oh yeah, this is, this is delicious. Make sure that gets, mm -hmm. I love it. I love Italian cooking. I mean, I remember, okay. So I don't know if my mom is watching this. Probably won't. Um, just because. Um, she, when I was young, she went through a phase of like the late 70s, healthy eating, all grains, all whole grains, blah, 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 blah. Back then they didn't have all the resources that they have now on how to like make that stuff taste good. Um, and so... I was not really a fan of that type of cooking that she did, but I will say when it came to Italian cooking, whoo, she was up there, five stars. So I was thinking of getting my mom on here to do an interview because she married into an Italian family and she was not Italian, but she really became Italian through all of her experiences and she just really um really in her heart you know she, she took on the learning and the culture and instilled that in our family and really promoted that and i just think that's really really cool um, I think culture is very important. Um, knowing your roots, your ancestry, not to the point that it like changes who you are or makes you, you know, insincere into what you currently are. But I think it's important to know that kind of stuff. When I went to Italy and I visited my family, my relatives, I I visited the actual town where my grandmother and my grandfather grew up. Now they became immigrants here um, when they were in their teens. And what a story, what a story. But anyway, definitely don't have time for that. When I went there to Italy, between Rome and Naples, and I didn't realize, I never had this type of experience when I left there and I came back to America. Hang on a minute, I need to get a plate so I can put this on. And I came back to America and looking back, that was when I realized that it was like a, there was a part of, a part of me, this is popping now. Yeah, this looks good. And actually, I'm going to put that one back a little bit. That one I could have definitely pounded a little bit more. And uh, so anyway, so what am I saying? What am I saying? What I'm saying is... Uh, that I'm very paranoid about undercooked chicken. I'm probably overcooking this. Uh, so, so my point is, is that when I came back, I felt like a part of me had been filled. A part of me that I wasn't aware was not there, was lacking. And that was being able to see where my family came from. To be able to walk the same mountain, the same hilly mountain, up to the monastery that my grandmother used to walk when she was very young to take food to the monks that were at the monastery at the top. That was really moving for me. Um, I always heard stories about that. So when I was there, I said, 
I need to, I really want to, uh, you know, of course the monks aren't there anymore, but we did. We went up, we walked up, my cousin took me and it was kind of surreal. I don't, I don't know if they really understood how much that meant to me, but it did. And I just think if anybody, no matter what nationality you are, I think understanding your roots doesn't mean you have to take on all the traditions, doesn't mean you have to take on all the beliefs, anything like that. But I do think that there's something to be said for having an understanding of the history of your family line. And uh, especially if you've heard stories, you know, if you grew up hearing stories about, oh, your grandpa used to do this, or he was a shoemaker in Switzerland, and he, or I guess such a little more like maybe he made watches or something. And anyway, you know, just hearing those type of stories, it's, um, when you go and you see it and you visualize it, it, it's not visualizing anymore. You're experiencing it. It's something that's tangible. It's something you walk the same roads, the same side streets, the same stones, the same bricks. But you see the same, I see the same trees, you know, you see, and it's, the same, the same sky, the, the same houses that have been there for centuries. And it's really moving. It's really, really touching. I don't think my cousins really know how much that experience meant to me. I mean, I guess they did, but none of them had really ever been out of their country, and they didn't really know. And I don't know. Need some more olive oil in here. So there's a movie that we, that my husband and I watched once. It was an Italian movie. And it, I don't remember the name of it. Maybe one of y'all could let me know. It was many years ago. And it was a story about these, these men. They were, if I get the story right, cause like I said, it was a long time ago. And they were robbing a house. Okay. And so they were robbing the house. The people were away. But when they got there in the kitchen, the people had been making a sauce. So the men came in, they had busted through the wrong wall, ended up in the kitchen, I think it was. So they sat down and what, and they, they see the sauce there. So what does an Italian do? An Italian goes over, he tastes the sauce, sits down, he says, I could use a little more olive oil. Isn't that so classic Italian? It was, it was really funny. Uh, we definitely take our food very, very seriously. Okay, this is looking delicious. This is about two to three minutes on each side. Let me move this out of the way so you can see. I'm going to show this to you. Let me... So, there we go. That's looking good. Those are Italian chicken cutlets. I couldn't even do them thinner. I, it's almost like they puffed up. It's kind of weird. I don't know if it's the breadcrumbs or what, but you can see them cooking away there. Delicious. So the water's boiling. I'm going to add in some angel hair pasta. This will be ready in about three minutes by the time I get all this done. This will go great with, um, I already said this, but I'll say it again. Even just a simple salad. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could just be a simple green salad. I remember when I was in Italy having their salad. And it was just like a huge bowl of lettuce chopped up. And... They didn't have anything extra special that was added in. It was just from the from the garden. But I have to tell you, it was so good. Why was it so good? I wish I could go back. But I think two things. One, fresh lettuce just always tastes better than at the store. Okay? That's just that's just the way it is. Okay, I don't care what kind you get, it's never gonna taste as good as picking it fresh. That's one. Two, the olive oil. Actually, probably number one is the olive oil, and number two is uh, the um, the quality of the lettuce. And I just have to tell you, the the 
the um when you are cooking or you're doing something real simple and you want good flavor, you really got to use a good olive oil. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, just a little bit more. Oh, this is so good. So I'm going to taste it. And uh, so definitely no, I don't want to have to have you guys hanging around, but this is, this is how we make our Italian chicken cutlets. Again, if you like Italian cooking, please subscribe to the channel because I'm coming out with more recipes. I'll give you the link. Actually, if you want the printed written recipe, I'll put a link below for the, for the, um, for the recipe. Mm. So good. So good. So good. If you're watching this and you've had this before, you know what I'm talking about. Can't get much better than that. Simple. So simple and easy. Breadcrumbs. You can even do plain breadcrumbs. If you don't have the herbs or whatever, you can do plain. That's fine. I don't always do parsley in it, but this time I did. And I'm glad I did because I'm kind of in that mood, you know. So, all right. Well, I think that's pretty much it that I have for you guys. This is just about done. I'm really happy with this. And I'm certainly not going to keep doing a live while, while uh, <laughs> I clean the dishes. So, please subscribe, like, follow, share. Let me know in the comments how you like your your chicken cutlets if you grew up with chicken cutlets or if this is the first time you've ever seen them made and how easy it is i mean really make your pasta while you're doing it and you got a meal by the time you're done so well thank you so much for watching i cannot thank you all enough for your support and it's so great to just be with other people who also enjoy and experience the joy of italian cooking well thanks for watching grazie e ciao